Good morning, everyone. Alicia Cordes Mayo here with Deeb Communications Department. Really glad to have all of you with us today. Um, if you could please remember to keep your computers, phones, whatever, uh, muted, just that helps mitigate with the echoes. You can type questions in the chat or raise, use the raise hand feature. And uh, we're happy to take questions at the end. And I will put a name and an email address over in the chat. If you have any technical difficulties, you can reach out to my colleague, Dawn. So with that, uh, welcome to the February jobs report and I'll turn it over to our commissioner, Kevin McKinnon. Well, thanks Alicia and uh, good morning. Um, and thanks uh, to all of you for being uh, here with us uh, today. We actually have a milestone to share with you this morning. Uh, Minnesota has completely recovered uh, the private sector jobs it lost during the early months of the pandemic. The private sector lost 385,900 jobs from February through April of 2020 uh, and has since regained 388,700 jobs as of February 2023. So basically doing the math, uh, February 23 marks the first month when the private sector is fully recovered from the pandemic induced loss and went on to gain an additional 2,800 jobs. Overall, looking at both private and public sector jobs, Minnesota lost 416,000 jobs from February through April of 2020 and has since uh, gained 405,900 jobs as of February 2023, or almost 98% of the jobs lost on a seasonally adjusted uh, basis. Minnesota gained 10,100 jobs from January to February on a seasonally adjusted basis. That's up 0.3%. Uh, uh, the private sector gained 9,400 jobs, up 0.4%. Uh, stronger growth estimates than what is seen nationally uh, over the month. Minnesota's unemployment rate ticked up one tenth of a percent to three uh, percent. In and uh, the labor force participation rate ticked down one tenth of a percent to 68% from January to February. Clearly lower than the national. Uh, numbers listed on the slide. Um, our continued job growth is uh, great news for our state uh, and our unemployment rate remains low, which is also great news. So put that together, that strong job growth and low unemployment rate mean there's a lot of opportunity out there for Minnesota workers. We uh, are working with employers, with our partners in the career force uh, locations around the state. Uh, and with others to continue to get the word out about all the good jobs that are available. We'd really like to see the uh, labor force participation rate increase, which remains uh, higher than the national average, uh, but we'd like to see it go a little higher, uh, which would be more consistent with where we were pre-pandemic, closer to 70%. So with that, now I'll hand things over to our Labor Market Information Director, uh, Angelina Wynn, for a closer look at the data. Thank you, Commissioner. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm just going to jump right in. <clears throat> so of the uh, over the month job growth, we've seen um, eight super sectors uh, experience growth, and the most notable ones are construction uh, gained 2,200 jobs or 1.7% increase. Other services gain 1,800 jobs, um, also 1.7% 1 increase, uh, and manufacturing gain 1,500 jobs, or a 0.5% increase. Um, three super sectors saw no growth or just a tiny um, negative growth, and those are um, information. Information did not change over the month, uh, neither did financial activities. Uh, mining and logging lost just 200 jobs, um, which is a 3.1% change. And we seem to um, lose our slides, but they will go back up soon. So next slide, please. I'll be right back with you, Angelina. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, yes, this is the correct one. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so our labor force in February is about 3.08 million. So over the month, um, it shrunk a little bit by 1,182 workers, um, and, and it is about 45,000 uh, workers smaller than it was before the pandemic. 
um, the number of employed fell by 2,200 over the month, and the number of unemployed rose by about 1,000. And the February labor force participation rate is 68%, and it has been hovering around 67, 68% for a while. Um, Pre-pandemic, it was uh, closer to 71%. Next slide, please. So over the year, um, overall, February growth is a bit slower than January over the year growth for both Minnesota and the U.S. Um, in Minnesota, we gained 65, uh, a little more than 65,000 payroll jobs, which is a 2.3% increase. The private sector gained about 55,000 and, uh, and 500 jobs, um, also up 2.3% over the year. Um, all of our super sectors saw positive annual growth except for mining and logging. So a few um, noteworthy changes were construction gained almost 5,000 jobs, um, which is a 4.3% growth over the year. And this is a huge uh, over the year growth compared to January's over the year growth. Leisure and hospitality continue uh, strong recoveries from the pandemic, um, and it's the super sector that is still posting the largest growth of, of all the super sectors um, up about 20,000 jobs over the year. And again, Minnesota outpaced the national rate. So we grew um, for this super sector. We grew 8.4% versus 7.7% uh, in the US. And this growth is driven by uh, double digit percentage increases in arts, entertainment and recreation um, and accommodation. The second largest uh, growing super sector over the year is education and health services. Um, up by uh, around 12,500 jobs, which is a 2.3% growth. And it's mostly driven by growth in nursing and residential care facilities um, and social assistance, despite an over the year decline in educational services. Um, government continued to post positive growth over the year, um, up almost 10,000 jobs, which is 2.4% outpacing our own January over the year growth and outpacing that of the of the US February over the year growth. Um, nationally, jobs grew 3.2% over the year and um, nationally, the private sector grew 3.5%. Next slide, please. In terms of post pandemic recovery, it is very exciting that Minnesota's private sector has fully recovered this month. Um, total total non-farm jobs in Minnesota as a whole has recovered 97.6% of the jobs uh, that we lost due to the pandemic. Um, some sectors recover their jobs and then proceeded to grow even more. Um, those are the ones with the green bars pointing to the right. Um, and they are arts, entertainment and recreation, construction, transportation, warehousing and utilities manufacturing, um, professional scientific and technical services, and wholesale trade. Um, a few sectors haven't recovered well and have actually lost even more jobs um, uh, since the pandemic, and they are mining and logging, state government, and federal government. Next slide, please. And lastly, we look at uh, wages and inflation. So inflation is still outpacing wage growth. Um, over the month, average hourly wages for all private sector workers fell uh, 47 cents um, from Minnesota. But over the year, um, hourly earnings rose by 2.2%. And since uh, pre-pandemic, uh, wages have grown by 11.7% in Minnesota. Um, it's still slower growth compared to inflation. So over the year, inflation is uh, 6%. And uh, over three years since uh, pre-pandemic times, inflation is 16.3%. Um, nationally, um, we're seeing the same trends over the month. Um, wages fell by 20 cents over the month, um, but again, increased 4.6% over the year, and over three years have increased 15.1%. Um, some sectors had wage growth that outpaced inflation, um, and they are construction, finance and insurance, and food services and drinking places. So those are the, the green bars that are uh, taller than the yellow bar. And that is all I have to share. Uh, back to you, Alicia. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Angelina. And uh, thank you, Commissioner. So we are happy to take on topic questions here today. You can use, again, the raise hand feature or you can chat um, in the chat box itself. So any questions that we can answer today from our 
books in the press. Pavita, start to view and over to you, please. Good morning. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, I was wondering if you guys um, have any thoughts about like, you know, this is the second straight month of strong job growth. Uh, we still have a low unemployment rate. Uh, you know, interest rates are going up. Um, it still seems like a pretty tight labor market. What do you think is like going on? Is it just uh, there's a better matching going on between workers and, you know, and and companies or what, you know, what do you think is uh, fueling some of this job growth that we've been seeing? You're on mute. <laughs> You're on. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Kavita, for the question. You know, our economy is still strong in terms of like consumer demand, um, which is my my first answer, first thought that comes into my mind why we're seeing good job growth. Um, consumers are still buying things, uh, needing things, um, and and the economy is good. Like businesses are profiting and they need more workers to meet consumer demands. Which other questions can we try to answer today? Oh, and I see one over here in the chat. Um, so here's the question. We still hear employers say there are people sitting on the sidelines and staying out of the workforce. Do we have an idea of the numbers of people who may fit this description? Thank you, Renee, for putting that in the chat. Yeah, our, our data does confirm that in the sense that our, our labor force size is smaller and our rate, labor force participation rate is lower than it was pre-pandemic. Um, some of the research that we've we've done, um, so so some some workers do have a harder time um, finding employment and they tend to be like from from vulnerable groups, uh, for example, workers with lower educational attainment or um, older workers who are over 55. Um, or black workers tend to have uh, who who work in industries with high churns tend to have a harder time um, uh, getting back to the job that they had lost. Um, so yes, there's definitely some subgroups that um, are are struggling more. And um, we and Kevin, I, I will hand this over to you. Um, we are working um, to help them to get back into the labor force. Yeah, ab absolutely, uh, and that is uh, certainly a big uh, role for our Workforce Development Division, um, not only uh, identifying uh, the folks uh, to get back in the workforce, but then uh, obviously removing the barriers and giving them the training that they uh, that they might need to be successful uh, in a career and, and or in a career pathway. Uh, I think you're seeing uh, a lot of our uh, asks in the legislature around that uh, those concepts as well, uh, and uh, doing more within targeted communities and uh, and getting people back in the workforce. So thank you for the question. I also just want to mention that these are very long term trends based on um, an older population. So the labor force participation rate is calculated on the population that's over 16. So everybody over 16. So as a higher share of people retire, you know, compose that, composing that population, a higher and higher share of people are, are just out of the labor force because they're retired. So that's part of the reason why the labor force participation rate, that's the main reason why the labor force participation rate has been decreasing. Thank you, Oriane. And that was Oriane Casal, our Assistant Director of the Labor Market Information Office. Let's see, uh, Kavita, did you have another question? Yeah, I, um, I again, um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, the trend we're seeing with wage growth. It seems like we have seen a de you know decrease in the rate of wage growth. I kind of recall it being like closer to five percent on a year over year basis, like in the fall. Or um, so uh, I guess are you kind of seeing a sustained trend towards like um, 
a smaller wage growth. And uh, it still seems kind of interesting that we're still seeing such strong job growth, despite the fact that wages aren't rising faster. And I guess, does that, does that surprise you a little bit too? Yes, we, we do notice the same, uh, Kavita, and thank you for the question. Um, it could be that, you know, employers can raise wages for for only so long and, and, and up to a certain point and maybe and it's natural to taper off um and it's still it's still rising so it it makes sense that um it is a tool to attract workers and, and uh, retain talent um it just like like strong growth is not always sustainable for for a long run so um maybe it's hitting the point where it's it's slowing down and um it's it's a natural phenomenon. And if I can add one more question, I was a little bit surprised to see that construction saw so much growth in February. It seems like it's been a pretty snowy and cold uh, February. Um, I don't know, any thoughts there about what you were kind of seeing in that sector? I'm gonna uh, ask Oriana or Cameron if yeah. they can do construction. <laughs> So I believe that's the seasonally adjusted number that you're talking about. And so that's, um, you know, a trend, you know, that that's based on a trend from over the last 10 years. So, um, you know, it's a good question. Why, uh, why in a snowy February did we see increased um, construction? But I think uh, the, the, the answer is it's a seasonally adjusted number. Um, it's, and it's based on what we've seen in the past. Thanks, Ariane. Thanks, Kavita. Any other questions? I want to make sure we're, we're not missing anyone. Also, feel free to use the chat box if that's easier. You are certainly welcome to, I'm going to put my email in here. Uh, with additional follow-up questions, you're certainly welcome to reach out uh, to me. I can I can forward those appropriately to Angelina or the commissioner or whomever. But uh, without seeing any additional questions, uh, Commissioner Cannon, I'm going to turn it back to you just to wrap us up for today. Thanks, Alicia, and uh, thanks again for all of you uh, for joining us. This was uh, we had a busy March with uh, two releases, um, and uh, we'll be back uh, next month um, uh, with the March numbers. So, uh, very much appreciate uh, uh, your attention today. Uh, as Alicia said, uh, questions uh, on the data. Uh, or anything that we can help you with, please do uh, reach out. So thanks everybody for joining. Uh, appreciate uh, Orion and Angelina's work here um, in getting these numbers to you. So thank you all.